Today I'm going to show you an easy and nice way to make your logo or your graphic 3D in Illustrator and afterwards bring it into Blender and give it a nice chrome material. Um, for this tutorial you just need the latest version of uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, what you need is just to uh, have your logo here. You go on your logo, uh, you go to Windows, then you need to search for 3D and materials. You go to Inflate and you see how nice and easy you got this 3D effect. And it's actually uh, you can actually export it as an OBJ graphic, which is pretty nice to import it into uh, Blender afterwards. So what you also need to click, you can go to zero point on depth. Then you go to inflate both sides. So it will be the same on the back side and it will not look flat. You can also uh, rotate it a bit. Um, yeah, here you can see how it will look. So it's like an, a real 3D graphic. And what you need to do now is just to export it so you can use it in Blender. Um, to export it, you need to go to Window, you choose Asset, uh, Asset Export, and you simply drag and drop this graphic here. And you can see there's your graphic. Um, on Format, you can choose a lot of different formats, but we need OBJ. So we use OBJ, click Export. Um, now you need to create um, a folder, so we go and create a new folder and name it logo obj. Okay, we already had a folder like this, obj logo, that's fine, you open the folder, uh, click select this folder and then it will automatically export it. Well, now we go to Blender. And click A to select everything. Click Delete to delete everything. And now you can go to File, Import and search for Wavefront OBJ. Mm -hmm desktop and we go to search for our export file we have logo obj obj and we need obj file obviously select it and you will see it will just appear in our blender file and it's looking pretty nice so what we do now is to give it a nice chrome material. For this you click um, you click the object, you go on this tab, Material Properties, and you can see now we have this uh, color. You can delete everything by clicking on this minus button. And we create a new material. Also, you need to change this view to shading so you can see it better. We go to the material tab to metallic, crank it up to 1000 or to 1 uh, on the way up and roughness we go all the way down. And now you can see by default it's like reflecting something but we need to make uh, like to create our own environment to have more control about it. So for this uh, we go into the shading tab. We change this from object to world. And now you can see it's uh, when you go to this viewport shading, it's only reflecting this gray color here. 
because that's, that's our environment right now and we don't have any lights to reflect. So we disconnect it. We go back to, uh, to viewport shading so we see what's going on. And we go and press uh, Control A. No, excuse me, it's yeah, Shift A. And we type in environment texture. And then we go to open and search for, you can use like any picture you have on your desktop. If you like the lights or the colors to reflect. In our case, we, um, we search for HDRI. You can download it everywhere for free on the internet. Just search for free HDRI. It's like an environment, but you can use any kind of pictures you like. Um, we'll try this studio small and have a look on this view. Okay, it needs to be connected. So we go from, uh, from this color tab and connect it to surface. So right now you see the reflection and the studio. Um, and what we also want to do is to delete the background to make it transparent. So we have more control afterwards when we bring it to Photoshop or to any other program. So we go to this uh, render properties, we go to film and we need to check transparent. And now you have only the reflections. And what we also can do is to uh, choose this one, um, press control T and we have this mapping tab and you can just simply play around with the reflections, like how you like it. It's also very cool for animations if you like put keyframes and you just uh, make it look like the environment is changing or the reflection is changing, however you like it. And that's pretty much it. We can go now back to our layout and have a look on our viewport shading. And what we need to do for rendering it out is to set a camera so we press Control A, excuse me, Shift A, and choose this camera. We press zero on our numpad to see what the camera sees. And we go to this, uh, we press N, go to view, camera to view. And now by scrolling our wheel, we can easily zoom out and adjust our logo. That's nice. Okay. Um, you can also, of course, uh, play around with the resolutions to make it a bit bigger because right now it's it's okay. But if you want a better resolution, you crank it up a little bit more. Okay, I think. Maybe this one, 1700, yeah, that works. And we can also go on this camera tab. It's only active if you go to camera and we can choose the focal length. I like to make it something like, yeah, like pretty small, maybe 10. And now you have this nice uh, bold fish eye effect, which I like a lot. And if you want to set some accents, you can also, of course, play around with some lights. But this is pretty much it. And also what we can do is change the render engine from EV to Cycles to make it look a bit better. We can also go to device and change it to GPU if you have a like a strong GPU. And that's pretty much it. If you want to see how to animate this, 
you can also watch one of my other videos. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any question, you can ask me on Instagram. I also linked everything in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching.